Hello everyone, Victor here. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for your support. Uh, just reached thousand subscribers and yeah, this is mind blowing for me. And I'm receiving such a positive feedback. So yeah, I'm so glad to contribute a little bit to the Blender community. So a few days ago, I uploaded this video to, you know, just say thanks in a funny way, I guess. The thing is that I enjoyed a lot the doing this guy and I actually learned a few things to control clothes like this and for this guy, this Sky Dancer, I was inspired by a tutorial of Chris Preniger. He has a great tutorial on, well, how to do a Sky Dancer. I recommend to take a look on his channel and yeah, he has a lot of great tutorials on different topics, so take a look on it. The thing is that after looking at this tutorial, I wanted a little bit more of control if you want, in terms of, you know, control the Sky Dancer to go where I want within his free will. So, well, this is what I did. So here in Blender 2.83, I'm going to create a cylinder and I'm going to set the vertices to 16. Now, if you have the snap to increment, you can grab and move it in set axis and with control snap it to the surface. Now if I press N I can see here at the item tab, the location, rotation, scale and dimensions. And this is now 2 meters of diameter, so I think this is too big. What I can do is go to edit mode and press S to scale and shift and set to scale it in the X, Y plane. Now I think something over here could work better, something like this is fine. Now I'm going to select the stop vertices and move it up. I type 10 in the numpad and press enter. And now this guy is 12 meters height. Now I'm going to duplicate this cylinder to the left side with shift and D. I rotate it in the Y axis 90 degrees and move it up over here. And now I only need this face, so I'm going to edit mode and select these vertices and delete them. Now I'm going to the right view and I'm going to move actually this face over here, okay? And now in the right view, I'm going to select this face and in edit mode, I'm going to scale it down a little bit over here. I'm looking for this kind of situation to make a knife project and have a decent topology. So something over here and now in the cylinder I go to edit mode and I'm going to place loop cuts here intersecting these vertices of this circle. So now I'm going to place some loop cuts and while I'm doing this I'm trying to achieve even faces here. Not perfectly but something that looks right. And one more over here above this vertex and one here down below this other one, something like this. Now back into object mode, I'm going to select this face and with shift select the cylinder as well. And now in edit mode, I'm going to press F3 and look for knife project. And with this tool, we project this mesh into the cylinder. Now I'm going to the object mode and I'm going to hide or maybe delete this one, we don't need it anymore. Now with the cylinder in edit mode, I'm going to tweak a little bit this mesh to have a good topology, not perfect, but something that looks kind of right. So now here in vertex mode, I'm going to press the C key and paint over these vertices on the middle of the circle, this one as well, and delete these vertices. And now to clean a little bit this topology, what I can do is go to the snap options here and select snap to vertex and press W few times until I have here the tweak mode. Now we have to maintain the shape of the cylinder. So what I can do is, for example, grab this vertex and with control snap it to this one. But now we have two vertices overlapping each other. So I'm going to press control C and enable here at this little button the auto merge option. Now I can click and drag a vertex and snap it with control to another one. Now let's clean a little bit this topology. Now 
Now I'm going to select these vertices and extrude and immediately after the extrude operation scale it a little bit just up here. Now I'm going to the front view. I'm going to move these vertices a little bit on the x-axis. Now I'm going to extrude these vertices about over here and extrude again. Now scale in x-axis at zero. Now what I can do is place another loop cut over here and there we go. Now I'm going to select this loop and in front view I'm going to press G twice so I slide these vertices over the edges so I'm going to move it in this direction a little bit and then press G twice again and move it to this direction to have something similar like this. Okay, now I can select this loop and extrude it about here. There we go. Now we need here even topology in order to work properly the cloth simulation. So with Ctrl R, I'm going to place here some loops until I have here even faces, something like this. Here at the bottom part, the same. So I press Ctrl R and scroll up the mouse and something over here could work. And the same for the arm, something like this. Now we have even topology and it looks right. Now I'm going to make a mirror. So here at the stop face, in order to work correctly, I'm going to select these two vertices and press J to join them. And here at this bottom part we actually don't need this face so I'm going to delete this and now I can go to the top view and in vertex mode I'm going to enable the x-ray and select these vertices and delete them so now we have this half part of the mesh now I can go to the modifiers and add a mirror modifier at the X axis and with the merge option enabled and there we go this is what we have now I can apply the mirror modifier and in edit mode I'm going to select this top edge and press ctrl x to dissolve it. Now I'm going to select this face and make an inset and move this face a little bit up just about here. Now I can press right click and shade it smooth and now we can go to the cloth properties. The first I'm going to do is set the pin group of the base so in edit mode I'm going to the front view I change to vertices and in x-ray mode I'm going to select a few vertices here for example these vertices and in data properties I'm going to make a pin group. I'm going to call this group pin and don't forget to click assign. Now back in object mode, I'm going here to the physics properties and enable cloth physics. Now for now, before bake, I'm going to increase these quality steps to 6 and increase a little bit the vertex mass to 0.5 kilograms. And so yeah, I, I played a lot with these options and different configurations. And these values that I'm going to tell you is where I found it works. But you maybe could try another values, right? So now I'm going to change these stiffness properties and set here a value of about 30. I'm going to enable the pressure and give a pressure of 10 to have a little bit of more control on the overall shape. And I'm going to increase here in the cache the end frame to something like 1600. And now in shape I enable the pin group. And in collisions I'm going to increase the quality to 6 or 8. I think 8 is the minimum value in order to work well. Decrease the distance all the way down and, and enable self collisions and decrease the distance as well. I'm going to increase also the end frame of the timeline to 1600 frames as well to have more room to play with this guy. And now if I press play, this is what happens and it falls and we lost it. Now I'm going to press shift left to return to the first frame and I'm going to make another collection which is the guy denser forces and I'm going to create here at this origin a wind force field and scale it a little bit. This is the trick that I learned from Chris Preniger. I'm going to increase the strength to something like 400 and increase the noise amount to some value like 5 or something like this to have a little bit of variation in this wind. Now if I press play with the spacebar, the wind is going to help a little bit with the structure of the of this guy dancer. I'm going to increase the strength a little bit, 600 I think, and 
Yeah, something like this. So now the guy is standing up here, but I wanted more control. So what I did is create a force field harmonic. It's basically a force that attracts objects. So as we did with the wind, I'm going to increase the strength to 400, for example, and give a little bit of noise. And now with the harmonic force selected, if I press play, and now press G to move the harmonic force, we have this guy dancing and now he's moving towards this harmonic force and we can achieve some movements by moving slightly to the right and now suddenly to the left and we have these nice movements and yeah I will play with that like hours One thing to have into account is that you have to move this harmonic force gently because otherwise if you have like a crazy movement the cloth can collapse itself in certain moment and, and yeah it will break the dance. So you just have to move gently this harmonic force and let this guy dance. Now what we can do to make this movement is enable the auto keyframe and now if I press play I can move the harmonic force and as you can see down at the timeline we are creating keyframes for the harmonic force. So now I'm going to play with this some time and let's see what we have. So I played with this 1060 frames, now I'm going to disable the auto keyframe and now if I press play we have the harmonic force movement baked at the timeline. So now I'm going to select the guy and increase the quality step both in the cloth physics and in the collisions. Nothing really high, so now we can press bake and wait a little bit for the results. So the bake is done and now if I press play we'll have the animation of this sky dancer baked in our timeline and ready to go. Now you can spend hours looking at this satisfying movement, playing for example with some matcaps and maybe look for some errors or some clothes collapsing. But in this case, I think we nail it. Now we can place here a subdivision surface. I think in this case, yeah, one subdivision is K. Okay. And with this, we have more smooth wrinkles, as you can see over here. So this increased the quality without affecting the performance of the cloth. Now let's ungrab this guy. I'm going to open a new window, drag in this corner and change this window to UV editor. And now in edit mode, I'm going to select these edges this one over here, this one at the top part, now I select these edges at the back part and deselect this one, Control E, mark sim. Now I select everything, U and wrap. I'm going to do the same here at the arms, select this edge and with Control I select this one so I have all this loop and the same here, this one and Control this one. Control E, mark sim and select everything again, U and wrap. I'm going to select this UV layout with A and rotate it 90 degrees. Now go to UV and pack islands and in this little menu down here, deselect rotate. I think I'm going to split this part into two to have more room here at the UV layout. So I select for example these vertices and Ctrl E marks in. And now I press U over here in the UV layout and I'm going to select these three elements and rotate them 90 degrees. Now again select everything and pack. So there we are. And now if we want we can paint some face here with texture paint or maybe apply some material. 
to give more personality to the sky dancer. So now I'm going to switch over to the texture paint tab. So we have here our UV layout, here the 3D view. I'm going to change the mode to single image and create a new one. I'm going to call it sky dancer 1k it's okay and i'm going to change the colors something something orange for now and click ok i want a more vibrant color so i'm going to change here at the left to fill and increase the strength all the way to one something like this now i'm going to change to draw and paint some happy face perfect Maybe I can paint here some details like this, over here as well, this one, and I don't know, I'm just playing and messing around with this, but you get the point. Or maybe you can place here a texture like I did. So now don't forget to click on save all images to don't lose this texture. And now back into layout, I'm going to open here a window and change it to the shader editor. Here I'm going to create a new material and call it Sky Tensor. And in the node editor, shift A, texture, image texture. And now with this little icon, I'm going to select the Sky Tensor texture. Plug the color into the base color. I'm going to change to material preview. And there we have it. Of course, please uh, play a little bit more with the texture and do something more reasonable. So now to have a nice animation for this guy and have these kind of movements on the camera like following the dance I'm going first I create a new collection and call it cameras I create a camera press 0 to go to the camera view and with walk navigation I create a shortcut which is shift F to do it because it's more easy for the technique we are going to use here so for me it's shift F so I can go to the walk navigation easily I'm going to change the aspect ratio to something square like this and in the camera properties I'm going to increase the focal length to, to 100 to have a like a zoom lens so now what we need is get some keyframes to the camera so what i can do is enable again the auto keyframe and play the simulation and with sheet f i can now move the camera and i'm trying to follow the guy and have some movements of the camera going down going to the right to the left you get the point now i'm going down i'm going now a little bit to the right and i'm just following his face and and his dancing movements so once you are happy with the movements now if i go to the first frame and disable the auto keyframe i'm going to press play and this is what we have but as you can see the camera is unnatural and is and is shaking all the way and you have these erratic movements so what we can do is change here to the graph editor i'm going to make more room here with all selected, I'm going to press period so we can zoom to all the graph of this camera. And now here we have a very nice option, which is smooth keys. And this will smooth these curves, which means that the camera movements are going to be smoother. Well, the thing is that with one only smooth operation, it's not enough. So knowing the shortcut, that is Alt-O, I'm going to zoom in a little bit to, to see what happens here. And now if I hold down Alt-O, I'm going to smooth this curve and now as you can see we have this nice and smooth camera movement you can press alt o and hold down a little bit more if you want but don't overdo it so that's it now play with some cameras and different shots some different angles and focal lengths and have fun with this guy if you have followed this tutorial, I would love to see your results. And in case you want an example, I will share with you two blend files. One of them have two scenes. On the scene 001, we have the Sky Dancer already baked. And in the scene 002, we have the set prepared to play with the harmonic force and make your own Sky Dancer. On the other hand, if you want, I share also the finished blend file with lights, HGRI and cameras ready to render, so you could learn with that as well. These products are available at very low price on my Gumroad, and with this you help me a lot, and I really appreciate that. Take care and have fun!